All right. So I wanted to do a second inter, inter, um, video, and this one is focusing on multiplying and dividing um, integers correctly. And I was going to mention that one of the big common um, errors of students is to mix up the, the rules that we have for multiplying dividing integers, mix those rules up with the rules we have for adding integers. And so I wanted to make a really big point here that those two are totally different things. And we need to be stay really alert about that. <clears throat> And I wanted to kind of share with you as well that if you saw my previous video on, on adding integers, that you'll know that there's like when we add integers, there's a deep, a very deep concept behind the way why we add integers the way we add them. <clears throat> there's like an underlying concept. And when we when we do multiplying and dividing of integers, <clears throat> there's no deep, um, like deep understanding behind it. There's, it's just, hey, let's let's remember the rule. For example, when you <clears throat> when we come to a red light and and we stop and everybody um, in the United States has decided that a red light means stop. And that's just the rule. There's not, not the, to my knowledge, any like deeper understanding of why, you know, we go with green and we stop with red. There's, to my knowledge, there's no like, other than just remembering the rule, there's no deeper understanding of why red is for, you know, stop and green is for go. Like we just decided, let's just go with that and let's just do that, you know? <laughs> and that's what we need to, that's the way we need to approach the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. We're just, there's just rules. You just follow them. There's no deeper concept to understand there, okay? So the rule um, for adding and multiplying integers is, <clears throat> multiplying, multiplying and dividing integers is if you have two negative signs, okay? I think of it like this. Look at my hands. I hope you can see me, the little video of me. If there's two negative signs in a problem, they snap together and make a positive because there's exactly two sticks right there. And so they just like come together and become positive. So automatically my answer becomes positive two thirds because there was a negative sign in the numerator and negative sign in the denominator, okay? And the same thing if I have negative six over positive two, guess what? I have one negative sign like hanging out there. And so I, I just, there's no other second negative sign to pop together and to make a po positive. So I just, my answer is just, an I divide six divided by two, that's three. And so I get negative three, okay? And so if I had, <clears throat> if I had like a negative sign in the front and I had a negative two and I had a negative three, then I would just count the number of my negative signs and I would, each pair would make a positive and then I could have several positives that doesn't affect the anything. But then like if I have an extra negative, the only thing is if I have a negative hanging out around, then it becomes a negative number. So these two, um, the, the, both the negatives on the two and the negative three would snap together to be a positive here. And then so it would be like a negative positive, you know, be like a negative positive two over three, which would just end up being a negative two over three, okay? Because we can add as many negative signs, positive, and that's not gonna change anything. Okay, so it's like these two snap together to make this positive, and then it still we still had one extra negative hanging out, so it ended up making the whole number negative in the end. Okay, so that's that's the rules for negative and positive multiplying and dividing fractions, or multiplying and dividing expressions.
okay? And the same thing if I have like negative three times by negative two and times by a negative one, then I have these first two sticks pop together and become positive. And so I get positive six from doing negative three times negative two, and then I multiply by negative one, and then I get negative six, okay? With that, with that. <clears throat> So basically, if you have an odd number of negatives, then it always becomes negative, the answer. And if you have an even number of negatives, then you have um, a positive answer always <clears throat> when you're multiplying and dividing. Okay, now it becomes a little bit more confusing. Let's just do a little example here that we have five minus a negative three times two, right? Oh, well, let, me, let me put a negative sign in here, okay. Now, let's understand a little bit about what's happening here. This here is a subtraction sign. This here is belonging to this five. So really here, well, we'd have to do order of operations, but order of operations would tell us to do this multiplication first and then do this subtraction. So in this problem, I can't just hey, there's one, two, three negative signs, the answer is gonna be negative. We can't do this because this is, an, this is an addition problem or addition subtraction type problem. So that we have to use the, the rules for addition and subtraction here. And we can only apply these rules for multiplication division in this parentheses right here. So we would say negative three time divided or times by two, and we get negative six in parentheses and then we would say, okay, well, there's a, I, I take the opposite of an opposite, which is just back positive. So it'd be negative five plus six. And then I would get a positive one is my final answer. So don't get confused. If there's actually subtraction going on, we have to state, hey, wait, I don't apply all those rules for just that belong to just multiplying and dividing to the subtraction and addition problems, okay? All right, I hope that you found this very valuable and I hope um, um, you it, this helps you understand it more deeply. Okay, bye.